season two. Give us a date. A uh, date. We got a sort of loose date. We got a late 16. Um, and feeling liberated. Feeling good. <laughs> Rabid fans of the panel. Everyone's really excited. So should be another, another hot, hot 13 episodes. Yeah, we're super excited. The greatest weapon ever known. Protector of the innocent. And our only hope to save the universe. We talked about it a little bit in the panel. It was a little bit more of an abrupt cliffhanger than I think we were expecting. We had, we had originally talked about some of the episodes that were going to follow actually having the ending animation attached to those, and then we would sort of work them back in, but delivery orders didn't really work out, so... I mean, personally, I love the harder sort of cliffhanger ending, and I, yeah. I loved seeing people react with like, oh, my, what the... <laughs> yeah, ah. yeah. Because you, you kind of leave them wanting more, yeah, you know? that's what you want. It's a, it's a challenge with shows like this where you're doing so much action, it could easily be an hour show. But yeah. we put it all into kind of 22 minutes, so... Stuff gets left out, you know, but I think, you know, it'll be launching people into a whole new adventure. Yeah, I mean, the last we see of the Paladins is, you know, they all get split into sort of different areas of this corrupted wormhole tunnel. Um, so, yeah, uh, we were able to, to tease season two and, and hint that they all end up in some, some different locations. You know, for someone in a space exploration program, you don't have much of a sense of adventure. The challenge is to give yourself the room and slow down, I think. You know, when you're you're looking at this big plot and you come in and you know that you have all these cool reveals and you can do all these, you know, oh, that, what? And the fans are going to love and not just kind of blow them all right away. Yeah. You know, because all that stuff is way more meaningful if you take the time to set up the characters and have the moments where it's slow and you get to know them. And uh, so that that really pays off, like, as you go down the line. And it's, it's, you know, it's a challenge because you're, you're ultimately making a show for kids and you want to make sure that you're keeping every minute of the show entertained, but as storytellers, it's, it's exciting for us to be able to take our time with some moments and really, you know, develop characters over the long term. So, so some of the stuff that seems a little bit more quiet, that's the stuff that's really juicy and interesting too. Talk about really kind of making a stamp with, with Pidge's character in season one. Well, I mean, wish Lauren could yeah. be here to talk to her because <laughs> she's super passionate. I mean, it was it was her initial sort of pitch to just say, "Hey, can we make Pidge a girl?" And then it was sort of reverse engineering that into into the story, right? Um, in in a, in a thoughtful way, and you know, it, it just sort of worked out that it's it's really something that's sort of been in the in the news, and it was kind of topical, and it it it, it, it worked out that yeah. way. Yeah, and it was killing her that you know when they rolled out the first three episodes as, you know, the one movie that everyone was like, oh, it's a bunch of guys again. Yeah. There's no girls in the Flying the Lions. And she's just like, and was just, she was just trembling. She was, she was <laughs> doing because she, she wanted to say it so yeah. bad. But ultimately, I think all of us, you know, the reveal of it coming naturally versus versus saying it right. out, out loud uh, was, was worth, worth, worth the wait. I've been scanning the system and picking up alien radio chatter. They keep repeating one word. Voltron. The fact that she was a girl didn't change her character at all. Right. You know, she was just as awesome as she was when she started the show as a boy, and, and when she becomes a girl, I mean, if anything, it lends a little bit more depth to her character, and, and it allows to, sh you know, it shows a bit more strength because it was, she was sort of dealing with all these issues. Yeah. And Pidge and Allura both have these emotional stories that kind of drive the whole show. You know, they're the ones that Pidge wants to find her family. Allura has lost, you know, her, her whole culture and is fighting in this giant war that she just woke up to. So they're really the, like, emotional underpinning of, of everything else. Guys, you should come see this. What is that? Whoa. It's important. I mean, they're, they're a big team. You want, you want everybody to sort of, you know, be represented equally. And I think one of the cool things that happened early on was when we tested the show, uh, kids, it wasn't, you know, with the original show, everybody sort of gravitated towards Keith because he was the leader character and everybody aspired to be Keith. Um, but when we tested the, the first three episodes, every kid sort of gravitated yeah. to their own paladin who they related to. Um, and there was kind of like this equal spread of love for, for the entire team, which was really cool. You'll continue to sort of learn uh, the mysteries that we sort of set up in the, in, the, in the first season. At the end of the first season there, obviously, yeah. we had the Black Bayard. How did that happen? How did that happen? Yeah. There's a, there's a whole 
awesome backstory of how did Voltron get made and what did Alpha War do and all that stuff that's that's out there waiting for us to explore and you know, we'll be dishing it out in small pieces. Yeah. Even with the involvement